Welcome to 3.10's Math Moment. Today's students worked with multiplying fractions, multiplying mixed numbers, and multiplying fractions with a whole number. So lots of multiplication today. This is all a review from fifth grade. So again, this um, lesson had a lot in it, but it's all because it was a review. We've learned this before. So example one just has a fraction, a regular fraction, times another fraction. Two six times three seven. All I do when I multiply fractions, I do not have to make the denominators the same. So I just multiply numerator times numerator, top times top, and denominator times denominator, or bottom times bottom. So if I take 2 times 3 and multiply the tops, 6 times 7 and multiply the bottoms, I get the answer of 6 over 42, or 6 40 seconds. Now, in sixth grade, we are really focusing on simplifying those fractions, giving the best answer you can. And one strategy that we have talked about is the cake method to get there. What can I pull out of a 6 and a 42? Okay, the reason that this strategy is nice is because students can use different um, numbers, different ideas. Um, your student might right away see that they could pull out a 6. Or maybe you see that you could, they're both even, so I could pull out a 2. Um, or maybe they see they could pull out something different. We're going to try a 2, just to keep it simple. 2 times what gives me 6? Well, that would be a 3. 2 times what gives me 42? 2 goes into 4 twice. 2 goes into uh, 2 once. And now I have 3 and 21. Now, I can't just stop there. I have to think, is there something I can count by 3s? Or is there something I can pull out of both of a 3 and a 21? And one strategy is to count by 3s. Okay, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21. So I could pull a 3 out of each of these and end up getting 1 seventh. This would be the same as if I divided the top and bottom both by 6 to get a simplified answer of 1 seventh. 6 40 seconds and 1 seventh are equivalent. They're equal, okay, but 1 seventh is much easier for our brain to picture and to understand because it's simpler, it's in smaller numbers, and so that's what we encourage the students in sixth grade to really do with their math and their fractions. Let's take a look at example two. Example two, I'm still multiplying, but this time I'm multiplying with mixed numbers. The only difference is I've got whole numbers out in front, but the strategy for multiplying with mixed numbers is quite a bit different. What students would like to do is they would like to take top times top, bottom times bottom, whole number times whole number, and be done. But what they need to do instead is loop-de-loop -loop these fractions, or C-curve, or backflip, whatever your teacher calls it, where you multiply the denominator and the whole number, then you add on the numerator. So 5 times 7 is 35. I like to write it up top so I don't forget. And then I do 35 plus 3. For a new fraction of 38, denominator stays the same, so 38 fifths. Now, this is improper. You are right. Okay, but we will flip it back again at the end. So 38 fifths, I'm going to do the same thing here. 10 times 10 is 100. 100 plus 1 would be 101 over 10. My denominator stays the same. Now, I do top times top, bottom times bottom to solve this fraction. So this is pretty big numbers here, so I'm going to pull it off to the side. 101 times 38. 8 times 1 is 8. 8 times 0 is 0. 8 times 1 is 8 again. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 1 is 3. I'm going to add. For a big old numerator of 3,838, 5 times 10, that's nice, easy, basic math, so it gives me 50. This is definitely too big on the top, so I'm going to have to divide 3,838 divided by 50. 50 cannot go into 3, and it cannot go into 38 because it's too big. So then I have to think, how many times can 50 go into 383? Well, I know that 50 plus 50 is 100, so that's two 50s. 100 more would be four 50s. 100 more would be six 50s. So I'm going to try 50 times 7. And it gets me 350, which is pretty close. 
3 minus 0 is 3, 8 minus 5 is 3, 3 minus 3 is 0. I bring down my 8. Now, 338 is what I want now. 350 is too much, but I know it's really close. So I'm going to try 50 times 6 to see if I can get what I need. And it gets me pretty close. 6 times 50 is 300. When I subtract, I'm left with 38. And my answer is 76 and 38 fiftieths so far. Now again, 38 fiftieths can reduce. So I could put 38 and 50 in the cake method. They're both even, so I'm able to divide by 2. 2 goes into 38. I'm going to do some math here to figure that out. 19 times. And I know 50 chopped in half is 25. There's nothing that I can pull out of a 28, or excuse me, of a 19 and a 25 evenly. So I know my final, final answer, as low as it can go, is 76 and 19 25 Now, to prove to students that we would not have gotten the same answer if we would have just multiplied everything with their partner, I always have them look at the first whole numbers. 7 times 10 would have gotten 70, and my answer here is 76. So that's why, even though it's a lot of steps, we have to um, follow those steps or we will not get the right answer. The last example is a fraction times a whole number. And I'm going to move this problem over here just so we can focus on it a little bit more. So I've got 7 eighths times 5. The only thing that you have to do when multiplying by a whole number is put that whole number over 1 and make it look like a fraction. By putting it over 1, I do not change how much it's worth. But I cause it now to have a numerator and a denominator without changing how much it's worth, so now I can multiply with it. I take top times top, 7 times 5, which is 35. Bottom times bottom, 8 times 1, which is 8, for an answer of 35 eighths. Of course, that is too big. The top's too big for the bottom, so I have to take the top number, divide it by the bottom number. 8 cannot go into 3, so I have to count by 8s and see how close can I get to 35 without going over. 8, 16, 24, 32. 8 times 5 gives me 40, so I'm going to stick with 8 times 4, which was 32. Get a remainder of 3 eighths. I cannot pull anything out of a 3 and 8. I cannot make that any simpler, so my final answer is 4 and 3 eighths. We know that fractions are a lot of steps and there's lots of different strategies to use, but just encourage your student not to give up and to keep trying and to make sure that they're using the strategies that they feel the most comfortable with that they learned in class. If you have any questions, make sure to see your math teacher.